The following program is a special presentation of Fox Sports Net. It's the holiday season on the banks of the Genesee River, but there's a storm brewing inside. Welcome to the Riverside Convention Center where Fox Sports Net presents the USA versus Canada duel. And good evening everybody, I'm Drew Goodman. 12th and final international duel for the United States this year. They have won six and this is a great opportunity for some young fighters to gain international experience. The Olympic Games of Sydney in 2000, less than two years away. This is the third matchup this year between the United States and Canada and we go back to May and the first matchup was a draw and then the United States lost five bouts to three to Canada in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan on May 12th. My partner, former lightweight champion of the world, Sean O'Grady, is inside and he's going to tell you a little bit more about the difference between amateur and professional boxing. Sean, take it away. Yes, it is boxing, but amateur boxing is a little bit different than professional boxing. Dominic Gwynn is going to help me demonstrate some of the differences. Take a look here at the headgear. Mandatory in amateur boxing, not required in professional boxing. They stress safety. Also, the mouthpiece here that Dominic is wearing, if that comes out during a fight, the referee replaces it immediately. Also, you'll notice the tops on these amateur fighters. Easier to identify for the judges, and also a top helps to absorb sweat or water that's on the fighter to keep them off the gloves. And yes, the gloves, too, are a bit different. You notice here the white area. The white area is the striking area of the glove. This part of the glove, when it makes contact with the opponent, it is the scoring part, and that's the only part of the glove that scores. Back to you, Drew. All right, Sean, thanks very much. Dominic Gwynn, we'll see a little bit later on. He is a top candidate to represent the United States in the super heavyweight category in Sydney. Also, the veteran of the U.S. team, Darnell Wilson, will be on display tonight. A couple of good fighters for Canada, two guys who have Olympic experience from 96 in Atlanta. We will see as well. Amateur boxing from Rochester, New York. Come on back right after this. Hi, I'm Doug Flutie, pro football player and father of an autistic child. A lot of people buy Flutie Flakes because a portion of the proceeds go to help autistic children. But there's another way you can help. Dial 1010-220 when you call long distance. You can talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. And every time you use it, a donation will be made to the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation. So dial 1010-220, talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents, and help some great kids at the same time. It's a win-win situation. I wish football was this easy. Do you have trouble driving in the rain? Is the glare unbearable at night? That's why STP created Vision Blade Glass Treatment. Vision Blade forms an invisible barrier that repels water and virtually eliminates glare. It applies in minutes and it lasts for six months. This muddy water sticks to the glass on the untreated side. But with Vision Blade, the dirt and grime sheets away and your view remains clear. And now Vision Blade is available in two sizes to meet all drivers' needs. See what you've been missing with Vision Blade. The USA versus Canada duel is brought to you by Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. And back with the champ, Sean O'Grady. I'm Drew Goodman. You want to put that headgear on when you got involved there? I hope I don't need it tonight. No, I think we'll be safe <laughs> just where we are. Hey, we're going to see Darnell Wilson, who is the veteran of the U.S. boxing team. They call him Grandpa. He's 32 years of age. And he is terrific in the ring. He has a good jab, a good cross. But he doesn't have a lot of power. In fact, he's not a power hitter. What he lacks in power, he makes up for in boxing ability. He's really exciting to watch. Yeah, he is a lot of fun to watch. We'll see him in the first bout tonight. Let's take a look at the rules. Sean touched on it a moment ago, the difference between amateur and professional bouts. Three judges will score tonight's bout. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Four knockdowns and you're done. Standing eight count is in effect. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. One of the differences between amateur and professional fights and the referee or doctor can stop the bat. 
out at any time. And in terms of scoring, the bounce will be judged on the computer. And you have to be quick. The rule is two judges have to, within one second, score a punch. Otherwise, it is not a scoring blow. You know, that's a little bit confusing. And I think uh, some of the amateur contestants tonight are a little upset about this uh, computer scoring. It's the biggest complaint that I hear from these kids. They say that what if the judge doesn't hit the button in time? Or what if he doesn't see the punch? It is still very sub subject uh, to, to the judges. Yeah, so if you're a fighter, you better have quick hands. And if you're a judge, you better have right. quick hands. Well, we are talking about Darnell Wilson. He'll step into the ring in a moment. One of the differences you'll see tonight, instead of the conventional three three-minute rounds, you'll have five two-minute rounds. What does that mean to a boxer? You know, it's really confusing because as a boxer, you get the three-minute clock in your head. You, you come out the first minute and you kind of coast along. The second minute, you pick it up a little bit and you really try to burn that third minute. Well, now with only two-minute rounds, even though they're five rounds, you got to really pick it up earlier than that final minute. Yeah, it should be interesting to watch as the evening unfolds. Two light middleweights to begin tonight. It'll be Darnell Wilson from the United States against Jeremy Thompson from Canada. Canada. Wilson, the number one ranked fighter in the country, 5'11", 158. You see he's 32, 11 years older than Thompson, who goes 5'8", and 154. Thompson in the red trunks, or actually the red top and the white trunks, and Darnell Wilson in the blue. And Wilson's starting off with that left jab. The jab is so vital in boxing, and these amateur bouts is where a fighter will learn that jab. Good work from Wilson. Right hook scored to the head a moment ago. Thompson likes to work off the jab. He is rated number two in Canada. Has been boxing all that long, five years, but again, at uh, 21, not that old. Well, he begins this fight backing up, but he says in the ring, Thompson does. Good right hand from Thompson. He says he's a boxer, stand-up style. He switches from righty to lefty, tries to confuse his opponent. Good combination from him. His best punch, he says, for Thompson is the left hook. Good uppercut from Wilson. Wilson, the aggressor so far in this fight, he is strong in the ring. Thompson tries to counter punch. And Wilson right now beating him to the blow and scoring to the body underneath. At least from our vantage points, those are scoring blows. Thompson comes back with a combination. Oh. And a sharp right hand from Darnell Wilson. With power behind it. Wilson says in the ring, I'm a boxer who can punch. Who ain't got no punch, he said. Said boxing is a science out there. Says his best punch is the jab, and you saw him start off this fight with that left. Good series of right hands. Wilson scoring. Thompson just standing there eating those shots. And a scoring blow, a hook to the body underneath that did damage. And normally in three-round bouts, you don't talk about an accumulation of damage as we peek in at Darnell Wilson's corner. But again, going back to a five-round bout, you can accumulate and wear down an opponent. Sure, and you can set up some kind of battle plan. You can work the early rounds and the middle round and then come on strong the final two rounds. You can work real hard, but it's up to you if you're going to work inside. But when you back out, I want you to back up with your hands up. Oh, excuse me. I'm just you. Back out with your hands up. That's the only thing that you're doing, okay? Other than that, you're doing good. Beautiful jab, beautiful combination. You got to keep your hands up. But you're dropping your hands. At all times, they're wanting uh, you a better guard from him. Okay. Got you, got you. The words of Candy Lopez and work hard, work, work hard six scoring okay. blows according to the three judges on the computer. Thompson did not score. And I think if you went and asked Mr. Thompson if he only got hit six times, he may beg to differ. <laughs> Uh, that's one of the controversies yeah, of that computer power. scoring. So here we go, round two, our opening bout tonight from Rochester, New York. With Sean O'Grady, I'm Drew Goodman, Darnell Wilson, and Jeremy Thompson, two light middleweights. <laughs> Good combination from Thompson. You know, basic boxing is the jab, the right hand, and the left hook. And that's what 
Thompson's got to get doing. You know, Thompson was not active enough in that first round. You made a good point, too. He was backing up, and Wilson was able to cut the ring off on him. Yeah, and Wilson throws his weight with his punches. I know they, they discourage hard punching in amateur boxing, but he's able to control the tempo of the fight with that hard punching. There's another good, quick, crisp right hand. Darnell Wilson. The senior of this boxing tournament, 32 years old, 5'11", fighting in this light middleweight division, 156 pounds. And a straight right hand by Wilson, snapped the head back at Thompson. And hooks underneath, he doubled up on the hook on the left hand, he came upstairs and scored. Thompson is just getting out punched. He's getting out quick too. Boy, look at the muscles in the back of Wilson. He is strong, he's in good shape. Condition is one of his best attributes. His heroes are Evander Holyfield, and Roy Jones. Likes the way those two carry themselves. Right, left from Wilson. Nice combination. Thompson is landing, but he's scoring when he's backing up. Thompson working out of the corner and not working well. Another big round for Darnell Wilson. And he's starting to hear it from the partisan crowd here in Rochester. I'm right. not feeling all right. I can stop him. You know. Yeah. Let's take a look at some Jeremy. action in round two. It is Jeremy Thompson on the retreat while Wilson is on top of him. Wilson gives him no room to breathe. Wilson again scoring with a straight right. One more wide open right. Thompson listening uh, to his coach, Don Clark. I would say he better listen okay, very intently. Again, you're still not moving for me. I'll give you one more round and we'll see. So okay. Keep moving? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want? That's what I want. I'll give you one, but I need you to move. 10 to round. 1 after two round. rounds. So that second round was scored 4 to 1. And not to harp on the computer scoring, but again, two judges, two of the three, must within one second of seeing a blow that they felt was a scoring blow touch the computer. If they don't, it doesn't get registered. Yeah, very subjective, this scoring in amateur boxing. There's a good right hand from Thompson. Thompson has to use more of those right hands. You have to do something with that jab. You gotta contend with that first, and then you can work your other punches. Wilson is too fast and too quick with that jab. Wilson says he will definitely turn pro. Something for him to look forward to and pro fight fans to look forward to. Well, there may be a decision sooner than Wilson wants to turn pro because he'd like to fight in 2000 in Sydney, but he may be too old. Right now, the cutoff is 34. He might miss that by a few months in September of 2000. Certainly not too old tonight. Good combinations from Wilson. Even an uppercut in there that scored well. And he continues to back up Thompson. Underneath with the uppercut scoring. Wilson, a busy fighter here in round three as he was in round one and round two. Nothing wins rounds more than throwing punches. Landing shot, good combination up and over from Wilson, Darnell Wilson. Those punches picked off by Wilson. Wide punches from Thompson. Got to come on the inside. You got to take some of the power off of your Thompson and increase your speed. Wilson is too fast for somebody like Thompson. Thompson yeah. also moving backwards all the time. Needs to move forward more. Paying too much for car insurance isn't any smarter. GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
This man represents all the people who switched their car insurance to GEICO last week. Sir, please raise your hand. 10,000 times. GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Kenny Thomas and the Lobos battle Big Todd McCullough and the Huskies. Christmas Eve hoops, Thursday at 2 on Fox Sports Chicago. Send a gift they'll never forget. Carson's Ribs, shipped anywhere in the United States in our Save Carson's Cooler via Federal Express Next Day Service. Call now, 1-800-GET-RIBS. That's 1-800-GET-RIBS. Back for round four, and I don't know if there will be a round four. I think right now, Darnell Wilson just outclassing Jeremy Thompson. His head gears off, and that is a strong indication that this fight is done. And Jeremy Thompson at 21 loses to the more experienced Darnell Wilson after three rounds. Wilson at 32 not only showed his uh, age difference, but certainly his... Uh, Faster hands. Yeah, his experience too. He uh, backed Thompson up the entire fight, and uh, really the writing was on the wall for Darnell Wilson. He uh, used too much aggression, kept Thompson up against the ropes, and then beat him up against the ropes. We'll come back with the official result to Rochester right after this. Fox Sports Chicago is your home for the coolest team in town. He scores! The Blackhawks are back and with a vengeance. Just buried him on the near side with a big hit. Chris Chelios leads the Hawks against the NHL's best. 41 road games, all on Fox Sports Chicago. When the puck drops, see it live on your home for the Hawks. Okay, Miss AZ, the director needs to know if you're ready to go on the pick and roll. I'm ready, it's about time. Okay, okay I'm on offense and you're on defense. Great. I can tell you about a pick and roll. Step okay. down. Yeah, you play defense, you know how to play defense? Okay, now my teammate's going to set a screen on the side of your body. I can dish off, I can pull up, I can spin, or I can pass okay. to my teammate who's okay. then rolling to the basket. Does that make sense? You got it? Yeah. Okay, okay. all right. The ABL, real basketball. So are we ready to shoot this commercial or what? You're watching Fox Sports Chicago. And we're back, ready for our official decision. As Darnell Wilson completely dominated Jeremy Thompson. And let's get our official decision from ring announcer B.J. Shea. Hi folks, I'm B.J. Shea from the Rock Station 96.5 CMF. And the referee has stopped the contest. And the winner from the blue corner, Darnell Wilson. And now presenting the medals from Monroe County Sports, Jim LeBeau. Darnell Wilson, 97-98 U.S. champion, number one ranked fighter at 156 pounds. He won a bronze medal at the Goodwill Games. And he's a guy that believes his prime is ahead of him, kind of like George Foreman, thinks uh, his prime is uh, later on in life, Yeah, I guess. in fact, he was even inspired by some of the older fighters like Foreman, like Larry Holmes. He uh, looking forward to a pro career and uh, happy to pick up the win tonight. See a couple of middleweights when we come back. The United States' Arthur Pallick against Trevor Stewartson from Canada. If your car isn't giving you good performance, it could be because you've got a dirty fuel system. Well, there's an easy way to solve that problem with 2-in-1 Super Fuel Injector Cleaner plus Octane Booster from Restore. 2-in-1 combines two benefits in one. It cleans and opens fuel injectors for top performance, at the same time increases octane up to four points, which means more horsepower and improved gas mileage. 2-in-1 Super Fuel Injector Cleaner plus Octane Booster. It's what you need to get back up to speed. I've asked Patty to show you how easy it is to use 10 10 9000, the only number you need to get directory assistance anywhere in America. Watch. Patty just dials 10 10 9000 and tells the operator whose number she wants. Leslie Weller, Denver. The operator finds the number, even offers to dial it with no connection charge. No connection charge? Sure, dial it for me. With 10 10 9000, it's that easy. 
10, 10, 9,000. Directory assistance for everyone in America. Back at the Rochester Convention Center. Interesting story, Gloria Peak for the United States, one of the coaches, she's the only woman to work a corner in elite international competition. And earlier, the champ, Sean O'Grady, caught up with Gloria. Gloria Peak is certainly a pioneer in a male-dominated sport like boxing. You're one of the coaches, uh, that has to be uh, unusual. Uh, well, it is uh, it is unusual um, today, but it's becoming more and more of a uh, uh, and I'd say more and more of a um, maybe um, natural event eventually. Yeah, you knew it was going to happen. W what is it that you bring to the table as a coach that other coaches cannot? Uh, well. I'd say that what I bring to the table is um, I, women have a, a somewhat of a, a different approach. Um, male athletes approach women a little bit differently than they do men um, because to men there's always the, the egos that clash and there's not the egos uh, with a female coach. In fact, that little mother thing comes in and I'm yeah. able to get more out of the athletes than most male coaches. How? How? Because. It, most males um, look at their moms like, you know, no matter what they do or what they say, that's mom and that's someone to be respected, so they'll do whatever they say without the clashing of egos. If if you and another male are together and you're telling him what to do, he feels like, you know, you're, yeah. you're trying to push him yeah, around, push him trying to prove something. Me, it's not that case. So if I say, do push-ups until I come back, they they'll do, do push-ups until yeah. I come back. If you say do push-ups until I come back, they'll say, right, as soon as you leave, they're done. Okay, dude, does that mean I have to do push-ups now? No. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria Pig. I'm going to try that out. Sean, do push-ups. Get up off that ground, Drew. Stop doing those push-ups. <laughs> We're set for middleweights. Arthur Pallack from the United States. Trevor Stewartson from Canada. Again, five rounds, two minutes each round. Now, Pallack's interesting. Six foot five on a 166-pound frame. So, obviously, a big reach advantage over Stewartson, who is three years his senior. Here we go. And the southpaw, Pallack in the blue trunks with the USA emblazoned on his back. He is the number one ranked middleweight in the country right now. And he is a southpaw. The number one ranked middleweight in the country, perhaps because he is so tall, it's hard for these other middleweights to hit him. They have to reach way up. You gotta get a ladder to reach the guy in the head. Very hard to hit. This could be an intriguing bout because Stewartson is the 98 Canadian national champion and he has 10 years of experience. Yeah, he says in the, in the ring he is a defensive fighter, Stewartson says. His best punch is a straight right. He is naturally right-handing. Go, going up against the southpaw in Palak. So, uh, he says his style, Palak says, I'm an international boxer, a European type. I stand straight up and I start jabbing. His best punch is a wild left. He throws that more as a tactical weapon. His father, Ted Palak, was a boxer in the late 50s and 60s. Had about 150 amateur fights in Poland. Normally, you find a middleweight about maybe 5'11 would be a tall middleweight. They're normally about 5'8 to 5'10. But here's a kid that's 6'5 is a middleweight. Extremely tall. He might eventually outgrow that weight class. He will if he likes to eat. If he likes to eat at all, he'll outgrow the weight class. 30 seconds left in round one. Kind of a feeling out process. Which is just what he said he will do. Feel him out in the first round and then adjust. He expected more pressure tonight from Stewartson. Straight right. Missed by Stewartson. Stewartson's got to gotta start landing punches on that body. Quit reaching for this man's head. Go downstairs to his body where it's easier to hit. I thought it was too tall. More jab, okay? More jab. Stick with the jab, okay? Jab, 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 you know? And a left hand. Why you no set up people for left hand, okay? No ambiguity in that. They want more left hand, okay? more jabs. Jab, jab, left hand. Double left hand, okay? And move. Okay? That is his father, Ted, in the corner. Former boxer, took him to the gym when he was five or six. Yeah, his first fight came when he was okay. 10 years of age. You see the Kronk Gym 
on the Kronk boxing team on the back of the t-shirt that Ted is wearing. Now, they are really from the Detroit area. Hamtramck, Michigan, right in the Detroit area. And he quite frequently, Arthur goes down to the Kronk gym and works out. He knows Tommy Hearns personally. And being a tall, lean fighter, Tommy Hearns, one of his idols. I wonder why. There's a lot of similarities between those two. You bet. Tommy Hearns, six foot three as a welterweight. That was unheard of for that weight division. At six foot five as a middleweight, that's unheard of. Yeah. And he's a southpaw too, and he, he lands to that left. No scoring blows after round one for either fighter. Again, computer scoring being utilized here in Rochester tonight. The dual matchup between the United States and Canada. Looping left over the top I, of Stewartson. I thought I saw some scoring blows in that first round, Drew. Uh, maybe they're, I don't know. I felt a couple. It's uh, unusual. Go completely round without a point scored. Chopping left hand, and then underneath Stewartson scored. First blow from Palak over the top to the headgear of Stewartson, then Stewartson countered underneath. Boy, his reach is so long. He can tag you the moment he steps in the arena, much less the ring. Exactly. All he has to do is stand up and start jabbing. He's reaching entirely across the ring. And I For Stewartson, he's got to get in there and start landing some blows. The way to advance on a fighter like Palak is get down low and then move in. You can't stand on the outside with him. You can't back up from him. You back up from him, he's just going to reach you with that jab. Stewartson got into boxing with his brother Jason, older brother, who is now 23 years old. He says, uh, used to fight a lot. They got into it. Oh, and a good right hook. And another one. Halleck got off balance. Stewartson getting inside, but he's getting tagged on the route. And a chopping left scored. Halleck over the top. He might have hurt Stewartson with that blow. The end of round two, the Canadian national champion, Trevor Stewartson, was tagged a couple of times late in round two. And here he is, moving in. Now the referee did not like this advancing from Stewartson, but there is a good straight right hand that knocked Palak off balance. And again, another right hand, kind of on the outside, one on the inside. Oh, wait, you're admiring your work too much. You're throwing right hand, you're admiring your work. Keep your punches tight. Keep your punch. Don't admire that right hand. You gotta come back with that left hole. Okay? All right? He's right there for the taking, Trevor. He's right there for the taking, but you gotta put that right hand. And a reminder that every night at 10 on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News Primetime. All the scores, all the highlights, and all the breaking stories covering your hometown team seven nights a week. We are there. Fox Sports News Primetime every night. At 10, check your local listings. We're set for round three. Two middleweights, Arthur Pallack from the United States, Trevor Stewartson from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Two hours north of Duluth, Minnesota. And Stewartson leads four to three. And that was all those points scored in that second round because no points scored in the first. They really heated it up about midway through that second. Rounds seem to be flying by. We talked about the two-minute rounds. These go ex excessively fast for us. Of course, we're sitting over here. Right. <laughs> Maybe going longer for the guys in the ring. Stewartson trying to get inside of Pallet. Stewartson has power in that right hand. That's what he's trying to unload, trying to catch Palak when he walks in. Palak, good arsenal of weapons. I'm impressed with how he throws his jab. A lot of times with the long reach, you see looping kind of jabs. He's pretty yeah. sharp with it. He's real straight with it. And see how he stands on his side, Palak does? He kind of leans over and he, he has the right hand closer, so it's easier for him to jab with it. Plus, it also sets up his left hand. More distance to travel. Right there, nice turn. Good rotation in the shoulders. 
Good kid, good looking fighter, this Palak. Arthur Palak, 18 years old, out of Detroit, Michigan, six foot five. Palak with the jab, caught Stewartson on the chin. Stewartson says his record in the amateurs about 85 and 10. So he is a good fighter. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused. You say your dog called? Yeah, said he needed tuition money for obedience school. That's amazing. No, he's always asking for money for something. Hey, Madonna. What did you do? I sent it. But not Western Union. No. But he never treated me special. So it never got there? No. But that's not the worst part. It's not? No. Now he turned the cat against me. Uh -huh. Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Arthur Pallack and Trevor Stewartson. Uh, the update, it's all even on points. Pallack, the only scoring blow registered in round three. Stewartson having to back up because of the long reach of Pallack. Yeah, but I think doing the wrong thing. You don't go away from that reach. You go inside the reach. Move in and underneath. He doesn't want to get caught with shots like that, though. Every time you pull away from somebody like Palak, all he has to do is extend that reach, just reach a little bit more. And, and he's no, got the body to do it. And there's no way you can hurt him from uh, yeah. six, seven feet away because you can't reach him. No, the, you, you have to go at angles. You have to. This kid's too good on the outside. He's too tall. Got to fight him at angles. Go underneath, go on the side. One, Good two, sharp basic, lap, boxing. that scored. Off the jab. Arthur Pallack scored a couple of times there to the head of Trevor Stewartson. Wow, again a score. Nice work. Arthur Pallack, tall and slender. And it looks like he's got some power behind his punches. Oh, he, he, they all have power. I've never been hit with an easy punch, but they all have power. You know, long, tall fighters like that, I, I really like, and I think that they can generate a lot of power with the way that they throw their punches. Their punches seem to snap a little bit more. The short, stocky fighters also have power, but it's more of a push power. Stewart coming throwing a combination of the body. Then he came upstairs with the left hook and scored. Yeah, start off at the body, work your way up. Ladder stages round four. Stewartson is tough. He's well put together. And we'll go to his corner here between rounds four and five. He's a laborer. You look at Palak. His father, Ted, giving him a drink of water. Well-deserved drink of water. The same thing. You have to throw in more punches. Don't go too close to him. Keep at this time. One, two, three. And jab, jab, jab. Do pivot, okay? I say Trevor Stewartson is a laborer in a sawmill no, no. in me, Thunder Bay, up, Ontario. And that's why you don't want And he get wants to become a professional. You you? Get but right, that right now, hand fire sight right set on the year 2000 in the right Olympic hand. Games in Sydney. Okay. And as you see, he's a 98 you Canadian national champion. So if he can okay. hold on to that title, he will we'll be in Sydney, minutes. Australia. Smart fight in there, okay? Yep. All right, all you do, just get under and fight that right hand and come back with that hook, just like you were doing. But you got it, stay the body and come upstairs, all right? Come on, let's go, Trevor. Keep your hands up. You know, he's already doing much better against Arthur Pallack than he did the first two times he met him earlier this year. He was defeated 11-3 and 25-8, so two decisions, but not really close. But he's very much in this bout, or he was until round four. We get the update, and it's now 10-4 Pallack. It was 4-4. 
So he pitched a 6 nothing shutout in round four. Well, you know, I applaud Arthur Pollock because if you find somebody you can beat, you should fight him every time. <laughs> Although he has nothing to do with that, but uh, he has a difficult style to figure out. And, you know, Stewartson came in. I talked to him today. He, he was uh, really up for this fight. He thought he, had, he was going to be able to figure out the style. He knows a lot about Pollock. He thought he could be able to work the angles. But he didn't seem to be as focused as Arthur Pollock was. You know, perhaps that's something that Pollock learned in working out at the Kronk Gym. You know, the fighters that work out there, they have tremendous dedication and focus. Pollock's movement in the ring belies his years, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. He looks, you know, only 18 years old. He uh, looks like a well-seasoned veteran. He's very smooth in the ring. Look at it. Good balance. And is, keeps his hands up high, has terrific defense, and that reach. The kid really to keep your eye on. Oh, two banged heads right there. That's where the headgear in amateur boxing really pays off to diminish injuries. 20 seconds left in round five. Stewartson needed a big round. He hasn't had it. But he's moving in instead of moving backward like he was the last round. He's about to hear it again. You know, he got a really chewing out between the last round. He'll hear it again now. There it is. Arthur Pallack and Trevor Stewartson. That was fifth round. That's and Stewartson was a little confused, yeah, was wasn't sure point. that it was the fifth round. We'll come back at the official decision right after this as we continue from Rochester, New York. The instant he understands the difference between winning and losing, that's when he'll know he wants to be a champion. Join USA Boxing's Ring Corner Club and help support the best in Olympic-style boxing. Your membership entitles you to a free Ring Corner Club collector's pin and an official club card. To join, call USA Boxing and help these young athletes become true champions. This little guy has big dreams. You can help make those dreams become a reality by purchasing official USA Boxing Sportswear and Collectibles. You're supporting young athletes around the country as they strive to achieve greatness. Call to order your official boxing merchandise or to request an order form today. Your support can make a young man's dreams come true. Time for our official result from BJ Shea. And the winner of bout number two in the 165 pound category, winner by decision from the USA, Arthur Pollack. And presenting the medals to the fighters, Royal County. Arthur Pollack picked it up in round three, four, and five, and Stewartson has now fought him three times and lost decisively three times. He's a very difficult guy to get inside of, isn't he? Oh, he's so tough to fight, and he realized the significance of this fight tonight, and he really turned it up when he needed to. In that third, fourth, fifth round, down the stretch, he really started pouring it on. He is very good in the ring. And another victory for the United States. They lead the match tonight, two to nothing, over Canada. When we come back, a former football player from the Air Force Academy gets into the ring. There are other ways to reduce your car insurance premiums instead of calling GEICO. <laughs> GEICO Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Carson's Ribs. Now available in envelopes for $10. For special Carson's Ribs $10 holiday certificates, call now. 1-800-GET-RIBS. Special. Whoa, this guy's good. Tomorrow on G-Shock.
Shock Rush Hour. The most extreme athletes. The most outrageous stunts. Extreme to the max. Get a rush with extremists Thursdays on G-Shock Rush Hour. Right here on Fox Sports Net. Amateur boxing in the United States versus Canada. With Sean O'Grady, I'm Drew Goodman. A reminder, what's Jim Rome going to say tonight? You never know. One thing about the last word, you know there'll be a terrific guest in the hot seat, and you know he won't get shy getting his point across when you talk about Jim Rome. The last word, weeknights at 6 and midnight. Check local listings. Light heavyweights, Joseph Pastorella and Troy Ross from Canada. Troy Ross, the three-time defending Canadian national champion. Pastorella used to be a fullback at the Air Force Academy and a good one. In fact, he was the offensive MVP of the Liberty Bowl back in 1992, and he's got to be thrilled with how Air Force has done this year in football. They're headed to the Oahu Bowl at 11-1. and one. So here we go, Pastorello, who has only been boxing for a few years against a skilled opponent, Troy Ross from Canada. And he comes out with aggression, but answers back. That's Troy Ross. Oh, good combination from Ross. Swinging right hook. Ross boxes from the southpaw stance. He says in the ring, I'm a, speed with, a speedster with a lot of boxing ability. He says his best punch is the right hook, and I think he's certainly showing that to Joseph Pastorello. Pastorello says, I'm a Duran style, like a Roberto Duran. I use pressure. I, uh, well, you don't want to lead. Best you, punch is the left hook. You don't want to lead with your chin, and a couple of times Pastorello came in, and he was open, and he paid for it. That's what will happen when you're in there with a speedster like Troy Ross. Ross again on the attack. And he picked off that combination from Pastorello and initially scored underneath to the ribs. I'll tell you this much, Joe Pastorello will not take a back step. He is a tough guy. Tough kid and an overachiever, he says, in sports. You talked about his accolades in football. Also, he was a state wrestling champion in California. Good combination from both fighters, up and down. Ross well put together. Pastorella tried to lock him up in uh, headlock upstairs. Maybe slipped the half Nelson in. Oh. And Pastorella got caught with a right hand when he came in. But here he comes. And Pastorella took a blow and he is down. And, and it is out. over. Over. Tense moment. That referee will keep him down on the canvas. First thing a fighter wants to do is he wants to get up. But you got to keep him down there on the canvas. Let the doctor come in and take a look at him. Doctor in the ring now. I got that punch on there too. Talking to the fighter and I don't think, yeah, I think Pastorelli now answering back. He got caught coming in. Oh boy, did he. Pastorella said he will move forward. He will continue to pressure. And Get the stool. As, as we talked about, when you have that kind of style and when you're fighting a guy as skilled as Troy Ross, you may pay for it sometimes. And he did. Walking in. He is aggressive. He's strong. He's tough. But look at the advancing style. He eats a right hook. That's where all the power is. Troy Ross' favorite punch is that right hook. Moving in, you don't knock many people out. Moving backward like Ross is doing, he's got dynamite in that right hook. He's fine. I'm talking to the doctor now. They will do an extensive test on him when he gets back in the dressing room. So Troy Ross knocks out Joseph Pastorella in round one. We'll come back with the official results in a moment. This week on Bull Sox Underground. It's a white Christmas, all right. A White Sox Christmas. We'll give you an inside look at the team's annual holiday party. We'll also hear from some of your favorite players and get their Christmas wishes. Plus, Tom Waddle talks with team owner Jerry Reinsdorf about the future of the club. It's a stocking stuffer Sox fans won't want to miss. All that and much more on the next Bull Sox Underground. Tomorrow at 1130 on Fox Sports Chicago. Oh, <laughs> my
Meet Wayne Best. He saw the kids in his community without direction and did something about it. He got them off the streets and put them to work, teaching important lessons in community service, responsibility, and helping others. So he can spend more time on FoxSports.com, where he enters his zip code to get the latest on his favorite home teams. It's like Fox Sports Net online. You're watching Fox Sports Chicago. The official results from ringside, and we go to B.J. Shea. And the winner of round number three, winner with a knockdown from Brampton, Ontario, Troy Ross. And presenting the medals, Troy Ross, three-time defending Canadian national champion. He was in the quarterfinals of the Olympic Games in Atlanta, and he lost to Vasily Yurov from Kazakhstan, who went on to win the gold medal and was named the most outstanding boxer of the 96 Olympic Games. So perhaps he would have medaled had he not met the man from Kazakhstan in the quarterfinals. Look for Troy Ross in 2000 in Sydney. More boxing from Rochester, New York, the U.S. versus Canada after these messages. The instant he understands the difference between winning and losing, that's when he'll know he wants to be a champion. Join USA Boxing's Ring Corner Club and help support the best in Olympic-style boxing. Your membership entitles you to a free Ring Corner Club collector's pin and an official club card. To join, call USA Boxing and help these young athletes become true champions. The action is fierce. The excitement is real. The tradition continues. Blackhawk Hockey on Fox Sports Chicago. It all starts in the game room with Chet Kopik and Troy Murray, breaking down the key matchups and keeping you in the know. Then, the puck drops with Pat Foley and Billy Gardner. You won't miss a shot with these guys in the booth. When the Blackhawks hit the road, Fox Sports Chicago hits the air. All on your home for the Blackhawks. Fox Sports Chicago. Tomorrow on G-Shock Rush Hour. Wrapping the week up with the best clips from Crank, Ford, Wild, Extreme Sports, and Extremists. Get a rush with the best of Fridays on G-Shock Rush Hour. Right here on Fox Sports Net. Back at the Convention Center in Rochester, New York, just off the shores of Lake Ontario, the United States taking on Canada in amateur boxing. And with the champ, Sean O'Grady, I'm Drew Goodman. Troy Ross, an impressive knockout a moment ago, and he's an impressive young fighter with good bloodlines. His father, Charles, fought in the Olympic Games for Canada in 1968 in Mexico City. And he's got terrific skills. You know, in boxing, you love to see those fighters who can box, who have good movement, good balance, good punches, but uh, nothing is more definite than watching somebody knock someone out. In fact, when uh, he scored that knockout, this crowd was silent. They were concerned. Yeah, I don't think uh, many in the crowd saw the punch, but it was obviously very effective. We've seen three bouts. So Wilson outclassed Thompson from Canada. Arthur Pallack, after a close bout early, Outclass Stewart's in the last couple of rounds and Ross's knockout a moment ago. Let's pick up the highlights. Darnell Wilson looked very, very good, the 32-year-old. Normally a boxer, but in this fight tonight, he was very aggressive, using some good shots, and uh, Jeremy Thompson did everything he could just to stay in there with the Darnell. And then uh, a little bit later, we saw Trevor Stewart's and putting the pressure on Arthur Pallack. Pallack uh, used good movement and was able to score and pick up another victory for the U.S. And then Troy Ross connected with a left hook against Joseph Pastorelli, and this fight was over. What a uh, terrific shot from Ross. Yeah, Ross with the big-time blow. Coming up, we will see a super heavyweight, Dominic Gwynn, 6'3", 215 pounds. He's 23 years of age, and he is good enough that we may see him in the year 2000 in Sydney, Australia. You know, he started boxing when uh, his mother, when he was a young man, but his mother was in the movie The Greatest from uh, the Muhammad Ali story, and Dominic Gwynn was a little boy. He was only two years old then. Muhammad Ali and he used 
used to spar around, and he told his mother after that incident, I'm going to grow up and be a boxer, and here he is fighting in this Canada uh, tournament with USA. That's right. He was shadow boxing with Muhammad Ali when he was two years of age. Didn't even remember it. His mom said, you want to be a boxer. That's what you told me since you could walk. Well, he's a boxer, all right, and he'll fight David Cado next. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a bow flex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. We have to wait for TV. Beautiful scene outside the Rochester Convention Center, and we welcome you back inside the United States, taking on Canada. And uh, another reminder, have you checked out the Ultimate Fan League yet? This is a sports trivia show like you've never seen before. By far the funniest sports game show you'll ever see. You can tune in to the Ultimate Fan League every weeknight at 5.30. Check local listings. Two super heavyweights, Dominic Gwynn and David Cadu from Canada. Cadu, 6'6 and 222 pounds. Dominic is 6'3 and 217. And Gwynn, the reigning United States champion this year. And earlier in the year, he was third at the Goodwill game. So he has quite a bit of talent. He's from Hot Springs, Arkansas, and he has the distinction of hailing from the same high school as our president, Hot Springs High. Says in the ring, Dominic does as a boxer puncher. He goes right on the attack in this Wait. opening round. Wait. Says his best punch is the left hook. Stop. For David Cadu, well, they're making an adjustment on the headgear. They have to have that, that fixed before they go on. Dominic Gwynn is attending college as he continues his boxing career. He goes to Northern Michigan. And his goal is Sydney and the 2000 Olympics. Jim Quigley, referee, took a look at that head care and immediately stopped the action. Now, that's the number one priority here for the referee is safety of the whole organization. We talked about that in the open. In fact, you got to look at the head gear on the head of Dominic Gwynn. Big, heavy punches from both fighters. Gwynn trying to keep that left arm loose. See him kind of flip that left hand out. Cadu's got long reach. And he's pretty well put together. Good skills in the ring. He says he, says he is a technical boxer in good shape. His best punch is the left jab, quick and effective. And there it is. Quick and effective. You know, a jabbing contest, you have to win that jab from your opponent, then you can beat him with the right hand. First of all, you got to set up the jab. The great thing that the amateurs teach you is how important and how vital that jab is. The heavy emphasis in amateur boxing on scoring, not on heavy punches or necessarily knocking your opponent out. Doesn't happen that frequently, though we did see it in the last bout. Well, a knockdown counts the same as a blow, as a punch. Cadu got into boxing when he was six years old. He went to the gym with his friend. Said he liked the challenge back then. He got a challenge in front of him tonight. Both fighters bringing in the heavy lumber. That's a pretty good win. first round. Both fighters had their moments. Dominic Gwynn to his corner. Listen, you double up on your jabs, okay? You gotta double up on your jab. He's, Instruction from he's Gloria right Peak. He's right there for the uppercut all day long. Slip the jab. Remember we worked on it in the, in the gym? Slip, come with the uppercut, okay? You can't lay there. You gotta double up on your jab. 
bring your combinations off your jab, okay? If you're going to throw a single jab. Wait a second, what about the push-ups? <laughs> She'll get to that later. Okay. He's a, he's a grabber. He's going to grab you and hold you. Don't give him that. Okay. And now over to okay. Okay. That's, that's the important. Canadian corner and David Cadu. Yeah. Don't turn back with your hand down in your head here, okay? How are you feeling? Very good Wonderful. first round. Good. Very good first round. Okay. Just pick up the tempo a little bit in there. Tony Pimenthal, Vinny Ryan over there in the corner. Vinny Ryan was telling me earlier he thinks Cadu has a great deal of potential. Just needs a little more international experience. Likes his heart. He's heavy-handed. And Gwynn, after round one, has a 3-2 to two lead on our computer score system. And Gwynn trying to press inside on Cadu. Yeah, using that pressure. See, there's just so much difference in the American boxers and the Canadian boxers. They're both very good, and there's a slight bit of difference between the two of them. That difference is the American boxers put their weight behind their punches. See how they move in with their shots? It gives the impression that the punch is harder than it really is. And there is, there actually is a little bit more force thrown with it, but that impression is so vital to the judges. I think Cadu's having trouble with his head gear. He's having trouble seeing at times. Yeah, he's got a glove in his face. Eye. He's got a glove in his face. Yeah, that's part of it. The glove of Dominic Quinn. Sweeping hook missed over the top. Nice jab, nice jab. Put it out there and use it. The do says that that's his best punch, and David Cadu uses it. And Gwynn split the gloves and scored with a right-left combination. Oh, good combination again from Cadu. Upstairs and then down to the body. Uppercut snapped the head back of Gwynn. Oh, he is very good. Cadu has recently moved to Montreal to further his boxing career. It was out of Troy River in Quebec. He's serious about boxing, says he loves the sport, speaks French and English, as many Canadians do. Well, Cadu, like Gwynn, is also in college at the University of Montreal, where he's a communications major. So can I'm um, tired him. Really good mm -hmm. round for Kudu. I tire him. I know he Yeah, he tired, tired him with that I left hook to the body. Now, see when you threw that right lead and left hook? Yeah. You nail him. Every time you see, he, what is it? He's dropping that left hand down. They you want him to throw a right hook, hook a, a right and a hook. Okay. Yeah. There's a right and a hook Don't drop your hands. from Gwen. Your hands down. Good uppercut hands from Lagu. Boy, what a shot. A lot of power behind that punch. Yeah. Watch this uppercut again from Kudu. Right off the canvas, there is a left hook to the body. That is a, a weapon that turns the tide in the fight. In fact, turns the tide in that second round. Very important weapon. Excellent. But body shots careless. accumulate. Okay. Head punches don't your opponent can take, he's, take he's, off. He's, he's and again, a little different tonight. Right, so First sure time this year, the United up, States up, fighting up, five two-minute rounds. Up. And in Sydney, in the Olympics, there will be four two-minute rounds as opposed to three three-minute rounds, something we've seen for years and years. And here's our updated score. Six to four, Gwen continues to lead. Stop! Two three-two rounds favoring Dominic Gwen and a warning against Kadu for using his elbow. Busy pace for these two super heavyweights. And both not afraid to use the body. No, they mixing their attacks up well, going downstairs and then coming up to the head. You know, you hit your opponent in the body, he, he goes down to cover his body, his elbows, his hands all go down to his waist. He doesn't realize his chin's open. Good combination on the attack is Glenn. Gwen is very good. But his fight plan tonight was to establish a jab. Look at these shots. Dominant Gwen. Both guys exchanging big blows in the middle of the ring. Six foot three, 215 pounds. Dominant Gwen, 23 years old. 
putting all of his power behind those shots. Uh, Cadu thought Gwynn was tiring. If he is, I haven't seen evidence of it. Well, he tired in the last round because of that blob body show. Remember the left hook that we took a look at? You bet. That punch can take the steam right out of you instantly. Well, he's but he's got his win back now. Yeah, he's rejuvenated in round three. Second warning. <laughs> Those punches were picked off by the gloves of Cadu. Jab, Cadu looks tired, breathing through the, the mouth, showing some of the signs of fatigue. Stop. Now I'm seeing that Olympic champion, I know that's inside of you. Okay, uh, deep breath, deep breath. Listen, deep breath, just like if you If the man hits you, you have to hit him back. And both fighters realize that. And they certainly did that in the third round. I'll take care Good of Good up and down work. From Gwen, Kadu comes back. Kadu not as active in that third round as, as he was in the second round. Starts, I'm gonna you gotta get right stop back on the stick with those combinations. The head gear in this gym. Bob, Bob, okay. And combinations right off of it. Right off of it. Okay? Keep that jab working. Don't let him tie you up inside. Keep him on the end. Work your lateral movement. Okay, I want another round just like that last round. That's a champion round. Champion round, okay? Gloria Peak, who you heard you, from earlier, a pioneer be at you from in Sydney terms of women in boxing. Right. She found the Montgomery <laughs> Boxing Club man. here in Rochester a decade ago. One of the premier boxing facilities Stop. in upstate New York. Coach. Okay, the doctor requests that you, that you readjust his head guard so it protects his eyes better. Okay. This is his own head gear all the time that he uses his own personal head gear. Oh, I know. Okay, I know. Too. How's that? Is it going to stay I'll down there? That. Yeah. Right. yeah, I'll okay. protect that. Oh, protection. You let the guy hit him, so that'd be all right. Safety of the fighter is it's the key here. Round and then They'll take as much time as they round. need to adjust that head gear so that the doctors Fox. feel that it protects the fighter. The protection of the fighters in amateur boxing is paramount. Good jab by Gwynn to begin round four. Gwynn seems to be getting stronger as this fight goes on. Again, good combination. Dominic Gwynn. Combination punching. Doubling up the jab and then coming with the right hand is Gwynn. Oh, good sharp left for Gwynn. Seems, Sean, that too often Cadu just lopes inside and doesn't work behind that reach of the jab to get inside. No, he's hesitating too much. He is waiting. You know, I talked about him showing the signs of fatigue. His mouth is open again. He may be wearing out in there. Whereas Wynn appears to be in good shape. In fact, even getting stronger as this fight continues. Look at him also circling to his right. That is an unusual move for a right-hander to make. But that's how good and versatile Dominic Gwynn is in the ring. You circle to the right, you move away from your opponent's power by use of your legs. The big hit of Kadu is in his right hand. You move around away from that right hand. Oh, and show your own right. Yeah, sharp overhand right, stun Kadu, who's really breathing heavily now. Gwynn dominated round three, and he's dominating round four, though he took a short right there. And a good blow to the midsection off the rope from Dominic Gwynn. Five seconds left in round four. We'll be back. So, you've got an older model car that's running sluggish? Well, here are your options. One, replace the engine, expensive. Or two, add engine restorer and lubricant with your oil change. Well. Unless you're made of money, I choose Engine Restore because it really works. The unique CSL particles fill in scratches and grooves in your cylinders that cause power loss and restores compression and horsepower to near original levels. Engine Restore and Lubricant is what you need to renew engine power. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused. 
You say your dog called? Yeah, said he needed tuition money for obedience school. That's amazing. 